Welcome one, welcome all, welcome to the third turn, 1937, of this Cataclysm playthrough. I am Bridger, and today we're going to be continuing this game in the first couple of turns. The Axis have played very passively. We have a diplomatic Fran uh, sorry, Japan trying to uh, secure some uh, Chinese areas through diplomacy instead of military, but that will probably change soon. Spain has a civil war going on. Uh, I believe there was some aid there in the previous turn, but a marginal victory kicked it out. So right now the Italians and the Germans are in a good position in Spain to maybe win a decisive victory if they're lucky. Germany has got a couple of resources. France has held on to all of their victory points here. We're still under status quo and stress affront. Uh, although, actually, Stress Affront, I believe, has to come off as soon as the democracies, the French and the British, get an alliance. Yes, I'm sorry, we must have missed that in an earlier turn when the British and the French got an alliance. Stress Affront should have been removed. Uh, the good news is I don't think it really affected much because the strategy that the Axis have been employing here is a very careful one where you try not to uh, provoke the... British and French, and as long as there are French cubes in Eastern Europe, doing any kind of diplomacy over there is going to provoke them. But we'll see if that changes this turn. Okay, all that having been said, let's put this in the correct location so everybody can see it. There we go. Let us, let us begin the turn. So at the moment, we can see that we start with flags, moving over to the player boards. Germany gets two Italy, oops, nope, don't want that. Italy is going to get one. Japan is going to get one. Soviet Union is going to get one because they're under political purges. Status quo is still in effect. So, do the Allies want to attempt to get some? Nope. The British are close to collapsing. They do not want to uh, try that luck. Neither do the French. <laughs> they're going to be the one sole thing defending uh, against. The Germans at the moment, so they can't afford it either. So that that moves on to production. France is at civilian. They have two resources that lets them build one thing. They can't actually build anything because they have nothing in their force pool. So instead, they'll convert both the resources into offensive markers because, you know, you might as well. Um, this could be a turn Germany attack. So having those offensive markers in the cup and or reserve, not the worst thing in the world. Okay, and next we go to Italy. Italy, 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 Italy. Italy also has only one resource. They don't want to spend their Roman resource yet, and so they're going to use their one resource to get one build, which is this Air Force, and they're done. Easy. Next is the British and the Americans. The British only get the two resources thanks to status quo, and what are they going to use those for? Last turn they built a tank army up. This turn I think they actually have to build an army, and an air force. Let's get both of those. One of each for that. So that's the Brits, and then the Americans. Ah, oh no! This is a horrible position to be in for the Americans. They can't build anything, because they never got to rearmament. So instead, they're getting six? Yep. Five, six offensives. Sorry, one more. Six. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. What are they going to do with all those? They can't attack anything. All right, next up on the list is the Soviet Union. Again, this is going in increasing effectiveness order uh, per the record display over here. So we went British or French, Italians, British uh, and Americans, and now we're doing the Soviet Union. Soviet Union is at rearmament with two resources. They never did get that attack on Romania they were hoping for. Maybe this turn. So two resources, going to get them two builds. They are going to choose to get the armor upgrade. Always good to get your your units upgraded if possible. The Japanese have quite a few things they could build. They've got a total of three resources. They cannot utilize the Sichuan resource because they can't trace through the restricted areas of Chahar and Gansu. They will need to take Hubei uh, and Hebei, or Hubei and Jiangsu. Uh, uh, so, yeah, problematic for them. They've only got the three, but they are at mobilization. That lets them build up to six builds here, or three offensives, or some combination of the two. I think this is the turn that Japan needs to go go crazy. And in order to do that, what do they need? 
Well, they also need to be prepared. So let's give them one naval upgrade. Uh, that costs two. And then each other resource is going to be converted into a, a, an offensive. Oh, that's tough. Is that what we want to do? No. We're going to take three offensives. I always make the mistake of not building enough offensives uh, for a turn you plan to fight in. And that is always a problem. So the Germans have, well, two resources. They don't want to use Benelux. It's way better to use it at mobilization. It doubles its value. And if you can use it when you're in mobilization and at war, it quadruples it. Uh, so instead, we're just going to spend uh, the things we need to spend here. We get two resources. That's two builds. They're going to build one fortress. And they're going to build one army. Because they need that army to come out sooner rather than later. But they also need the subs. They need everything. I tell you what. They need everything. And two resources is not enough to do it. Do we want to use the Swedish resource this turn? It doesn't get quadrupled at war. It only gets doubled if we use it under mobilization. <sighs> no. No. We're going to be patient. We're going to be patient with Germany and see how that plays out. All right. So everybody's got their official uh, situation here. Now France is going to put its fleet into reserve? No. It's not putting anything into reserve. It doesn't want these offensives. It wants them in the cup for as long as possible. In case it gets a flag, it wants to keep that reserve slot open. Oops. Always hit the wrong thing. To the cup is control A. There we go. Then the Italians will put something in reserve. Il Duce is always good to put in reserve because, uh, you know, you always want to use him as quick as possible so you can use him again. Then to the action cup with everything else. The Brits are going to put their air unit into reserve. Send the other to the cup. The Americans... Uh, we'll put the subunit into reserve and they'll just use it and get rid of it. And the other stuff's all going into the cup. The Soviet Union is definitely going to put their tank in reserve and then send the other stuff to the cup. And then... <laughs> yeah, that's a tough call going for the tank instead of an offensive marker. But I think we need to start upgrading. Because you can only use those markers like once per turn until you get to war. So if we start now, we'll have more later. All right. And then the Japanese are going to put an offensive in reserve. No, they're going to put their flag in reserve. And they're going to utilize that to increase their stability before the next, the next big... Uh, what you call it, before the next big home front test comes. And Germany, Germany's going to put a flag in reserve, I think. Might be time to get an alliance going here. If only to try to generate some flags. All right, the other two go in the cup. And then we move on to the sequence of play, which means Germany's going to let Japan interrupt and attempt propaganda. Two dice, success. Their stability is up. Oops, it's now hiding underneath here for some reason. Just a little bug. There we go. Okay. Next, the Soviets will interrupt. Nope, not countermix. Send it to force pool. There we go. And then they will upgrade one of these units in the Ukraine. No, you know what? They are not going to upgrade that. They're going to upgrade the Baltic states. That's a better play. Or is it? Ukraine, Romania. Jesus, this is a tough call. We'll do the Baltic states. Okay. And the reasoning for that is if I'm going to attack Romania with the Soviets... I want to do it with two regular infantry because that's two builds worth of units. If I were to do it with a tank and an infantry and I had to tie the Romanian army and take a loss, then the tank would flip. That costs me two builds all by itself. Whereas if it was two infantry, I would lose one infantry, which is one build. So you'd lose less because upgrade markers cost two. 
I don't know if the Soviets are going to have the opportunity to use a lot. Uh, they are probably going to hit mobilization this turn. That'll give them some free offensives. So we'll see if that plays out for them. All right. So they used their uh, army upgrade. So they now have the tank army there. The Americans are going to place out their uh, sub because why not? Clear out the spot. The Brits are going to not place out their air because they can't. El Duce is going to do something, but what? I think he might attempt uh, diplomacy in Yugoslavia. There's not, I mean, or he could attempt an alliance with Germany. An Italian alliance with Germany doesn't do a lot once stress affront is away. I mean, it still does some things, but it doesn't do a lot. And it provokes the allies, and we're trying to avoid that. Yeah, let's attempt diplomacy in Yugoslavia, because and then, at least if we can do that, then we will uh, get a resource out of it. So here we go. Two dice for Il Duce. Failure. He needed sixes because of Yugoslavia's resistance value. All right, so Il Duce, uh, no good. Holding on to him for stability check also would have been a good option. I didn't want to increase commitment with Italy because, again, trying to starve the allies of flags. And so you only want to do it if you really need it. And, well, Italy kind of needs it, but we'll probably get back to them. All right. The Germans will not interrupt. The Brits are going to interrupt and place down an air unit. Do they want to put it in the Pacific? I don't know that they have any reason to at the moment, so they're not going to. And now we go to the Cup, because Germany doesn't want to interrupt. We have a Japanese offensive right off the bat. We're ready to go. And I think that's going to be an attack on Hebei, which is unfortunately a provocation against the Soviet Union and against the United States. So the U.S. gains a flag, and the Soviet Union gains a flag. So we're declaring an attack on Hebei. There is an army there that has aid as a backup, and that means they're going to roll three dice. All right, so what is Japan actually attacking with? They're attacking with both of these armies. And what they're going to do then is bring in the air support here from Manchuria. And that is legal, right? There's no... The Hebei is not restricted, so that is legal for them to bring in both armies. The GMD's patron is tied between the Americans and the Soviets, which means it's actually controlled by the Americans. The Americans are choosing to spend the Soviet aid in order to gain a die. So here we go. Three dice. Oh, are they going to augment this? The Japanese are going to be three dice to three dice right now because the air superiority and the aid. I think the Japanese are going to choose to augment this with a plus one Ugh, that, that doesn't add a lot of odds. They're not going to augment it. Let's just do it. Here we go. Three dice for the Japanese is a five. Three dice for the Chinese is a four. That is a roaring success for the Japanese. They just barely did it. The GMD army is gone. The American aid is gone. And the regrouping phase, the Japanese are going to regroup one unit back to Manchuria, and then we're going to regroup one Japanese unit from Kahar or Chahar down in here, and the air is going to stay here in uh, Hebei also. So that was good. Now, capturing the area also provoked... Actually, that didn't provoke anybody. The aid is removed before we give flags for provocation for capture of the area. Therefore, there is no U.S. interest in the area when it is captured. So that's kind of good luck for us. They did get one flag, but they didn't get two. So next up, uh, that was one offensive, one military action of the two they get for mobilization offensives. So now they can use another one. They can't use it on a build because they're not belligerent. I think they're going to attempt another attack. Are they going to do it at Jiangsu? There's no aid there, so it might be in their interest to hit it before aid gets placed. We know there's a ton of American aid in that cup. So we're going to hit Jiangsu with the same two guys and an air force. That means this time it's three dice to two dice. They've got considerably better odds this time. An extra 15 or 20% chance of victory. Here we go. A five for the, for the Japanese and a two for the Chinese. Oh, I didn't put a cube or adjust the victory points there. But the other reason, by the way, that the unit in here did not retreat, because Chinese armies are allowed to retreat, but they have to retreat to an 
empty Chinese area or Chinese area without a Chinese army and it has to be uncontrolled. There were no such areas adjacent to Hebei because they're all controlled by Japan or they already have a Chinese army. So more good luck for Japan. Uh, they now have two limited resources they just gobbled up there for their war machine. Very good news. Um, they kind of wish they could hit total war right now, but they can't because they're not belligerent. Okay, that's the Japanese offensive. So now we go back and the Germans intervene to do something here. I think they're not going to go to mobilization yet. They're going to hope that the German home front marker comes out. So they will pass. And the Soviets are probably hoping for the same thing. But you know, the Soviets are in political purges now. They're going to want to switch to military reforms when their home front comes out. And that's going to be harder. Um, and then it's going to be harder to increase their commitment because they're going to have minus one to their political role. So let's do it now. The Soviets are going to interrupt and attempt to increase commitment. Two dice, it's a success. No, no pluses, no minuses on that political role. So the Soviets now increase a mobilization. That gives them the special Volga resource. And uh, that also provokes Germany and Japan and gives them commitment offensive. So let's, before we forget that, I keep forgetting that in my other games, mobilization and uh, total war give you commitment offensives equal to the number of industrial resources you can trace to, and the newly placed Volga resource does count for that purpose. So they got two. Then the Germans gain a flag. That goes in the cup. And the Japanese gain a flag. That also goes in the cup. They're getting scared of the Soviet Union now. All right. So the... Soviet Union uh, has increased their commitment. They now need to add four things from the countermix. What are they going to pick? Uh, they're definitely going to pick one army for sure, one air force for sure. They want an air upgrade? That might work, but not yet. Maybe at total war. They just, they don't, they don't, it's, 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 it's just not useful. Then they're going to grab a, a fortress, and then I think another army or another fortress. Yeah, let's do one more army. The fortress is good. When we see a place that really needs defending, we can stick the fortress down. Um, we did use the armor upgrade this turn. I don't think we need a second one until total war or until we're at war. Uh, it's just going to be a waste if we do that. Okay, so there we go. The uh, Soviets have chosen their four things from mobilization. So... Now we move on and the Germans can interrupt and do something. They've got only one flag left in their available markers, but you know, that's enough. They're going to pass. The Soviets can't. The Americans are going to jump in and attempt to increase their commitment. So they're sending that to the available box. 2d6, a success. They cheer. They cheer. Rearmament is happening. But the Japanese get a flag, which they can put in reserve. Oh, they put the other one in the cup by mistake, but either way, they got two flags in the last two actions. All right, now the Americans get to add four things, sorry, six things to their force pool. All right, they are absolutely going to add some stuff. Let's see, what do they have out right now? They have two infantry armies, two air forces, three air forces, and uh, they can't add any fleets because of the Washington Naval Treaty. They're going to add some upgrade markers because then they will almost never run out of things in their force pool. They're going to be able to upgrade. Let's do one of each. Uh, one, two, three, and then probably um, a logistics marker. We'll get that at, at mobilization, not at rearmament. Instead, we're going to go four, uh, five. Damn, that's a hard pick. The fortress could be useful later. Huh. They have now... Let's get one more army or one more air force. Damn it, I can't choose. You don't understand. This is difficult. Let's get one more air force. I feel like we're going to be disappointed if we don't have one more sub. Okay, there we go. That's the choice for real this time. Okay, that's their six. Uh, they have given Japan their provocation flag, and now we move on, and Japan can do something should they want with their flag. Can't go to total war. Um, they can't attempt 
diplomacy with Guangdong. We could attempt it with Yunnan. I'm not sure what the goal of that would be at the moment, but we could do it. Uh, maybe they'll just use their flag for operations against Guangdong. I mean, I'd like to use those offensives if possible, but um, operations wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. It kind of would. It would just be 3-3 three to three again. That's a dangerous game to play especially when they don't have the resources. Let's wait and get an augmentation this time. It paid off the last time. That gives us breathing room to use the uh, the offensive to get the augmentation. So Japan is not going to use that flag for that purpose. Uh, boom, boom, boom. They're going to wait. The Germans have no reason to spend their flag either. The Soviets do have a reason to spend their offensive, and they're going to do it right now. They're going to spend their offensive... And they're going to use the augmentation to attack Romania. Okay? So they're attacking... Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. They had a reason to not do that. They're waiting for their home front marker. Okay. Skip that. Going back to the cup. Crisis number one for the turn is a 5-4. Chinese resistance. Japan's not happy to hear that. This could be very bad for them. All right. So, Chahar, does Japan keep it? Yes. Gansu. No. And the next was Sichuan. No! Oops, not clone. Delete. They lost Sichuan. Bad news. They have something to do with their flag now, by the way. Uh, what about Guangxi? Two dice. They kept it. That gives them interest in Sichuan. They can get it back so that the uh, Chinese can't retreat there. They'd have to retreat to Gansu, which we don't care about. It doesn't have any resources. All right. So that's good news for us. Uh, then Japan is going to interrupt right after that crisis. And they are going to attempt diplomacy in Sichuan. Fives and sixes are a success. They got it. They're back. Let's update the board now. One, two, three, four, five Japanese points. I'm sorry we didn't update this earlier. It's hard to keep track of everything. One, two, three for the Chi for the communists. Uh, three for the Italians. Two for the Germans. And six for the British and French together as per normal. Yep, that's all correct now. It looks like fascism should be eight, so five. No. Should be five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. Now we're correct. All right. So that was the Japanese flag. They are breathing a sigh of relief right now. Next out of the cup, the Japanese fortress. Well, it would have been nice to put this in Sichuan right now just to hold it strong for us, but instead I think I'm going to put it in Manchuria. That way, uh, you know, the Soviets sometimes, if Japan kind of ignores Manchuria and goes into southern China and looks into its Java strategy, Manchuria can look really tasty to the Soviets. I mean, they could just take it, and what's Japan going to do? They come take it back a little while later, and then they take over Siberia? Like, okay, the Soviets don't care too much. They don't have a lot to lose on the Pacific map, but they could gain a lot by grabbing Manchuria and maybe holding on to it for a turn or two, depending, and it just could ruin the, the, Jap the Japanese strategy. Uh, they would have to bring all their stuff back and launch an attack and just waste a lot of resources. So that's a way that the Soviets can really drain the air out of the fascist tires there, is if they can grab Manchuria. So a fortress in Manchuria, always a good thing to sort of put the ja the Soviets on the uh, uh, on the put their thinking caps on. And maybe it's not such a good idea. That plus two to the defender there because adverse terrain is going to be real difficult. Okay, next out of the cup, uh, French fleet. Yay! They're going to put it in Paris just in case. An American offensive. They are going to immediately send that to Guangdong. So maybe it would have been in Japan's favor to use. Their, uh, their flag for that earlier, but I guess we'll find out. An American home front is going to have to require a test. Uh, fives and sixes are a success. They do not lose stability. And they now get to move their units around. And to be honest, they don't really have any place to move them. I'm just going to bring this air unit over to the Hawaiian Islands and keep everything else in California for the most part here. All right, next out of the cup is a Japanese offensive. Now they've got to choose... Oh, do they use this plus one against Hubei or Guangdong? That's a hard choice. I think they need Guangdong more. They need the ability to attack Java 
or at least get, I'm sorry, they can take Java diplomatically if they can take Guangdong. So they're attacking Guangdong. They're doing it with an augmentation. Three dice plus one versus three dice. The American aid is spent and the Americans gain a flag. They gain a flag regardless. The aid is wasn't required to gain a flag. It just gave the Chinese something to fight against. So now we got to give the Americans a flag. There we go. And the Japanese are attacking with both infantry units plus the air, of course. Here's their three dice plus one for augmentation. Oh, no, it's a four. That's awful. Three dice for the Chinese is a five. So the Japanese have one uh, loss they have to absorb. They do it by retreating. Very bad for Japan. They wanted Guangdong badly there. All right. Well, that did get rid of the aid now. If they can pull another uh, another, um, another item out of the cup here, another flag, then they will be in good shape. I think they actually have another offensive in the cup, too. Maybe they get lucky. But the Americans are absolutely going to interrupt to do something. I think they might... Mm, they have to choose between Lend-Lease and pulling back the Japanese trade. Lend-Lease is really useful in the European theater, whereas pulling back the Japanese trade is useful in the Japan theater. I think they're looking at this and they're saying, well, Germany isn't looking nearly as strong as it should maybe by this point. So I think they're going to spend their flag attempting to pull back the Japanese trade, get the embargo going. Here they go. 2d6. It's a success, much to Japan's chagrin. This is, however, a, uh, a provocation of Japan, if I'm not mistaken, and they gain a flag. Yes, yeah, so now Japan is going to interrupt. By the way, that was the U.S. flag there. Japan is going to interrupt and attempt maneuvers with this flag they just grabbed here, and they're successful. Maneuvers turns their political action into a military action. They're going to use it to attack Guangdong again. They don't get the plus one this time, but the enemy only rolls two dice. Um, oh, you know what? Back up, that previous result was a four to a six because we didn't account for the adverse terrain. And I'm sorry for those people shouting at the screen while we were doing that. But the good news is a four to a six wouldn't have changed anything either. It still would be one loss for the Japanese and they retreated to absorb that loss. All right. So uh, now there is three dice for the Japanese plus two dice uh, versus two dice plus one. Here we go. Oh, that's good. Six for the Japanese, two dice plus one for the Chinese. Oh, no, it's a seven. Oh, the Japanese beaten back again from Guangdong. Not good news for them there, unfortunately. Um, now, if by the way, if Japan does finish off the GMD, that results in a victory for the Chinese communists in China. And they can then attempt to expand by grabbing areas that are controlled by Japan. So that's not the best outcome there. Anyway, um, declaring another attack into Guangdong, by the way, gave the Americans a flag, which they will now use to try to get lend marker on the board. God, this is an awful, awful turn, because uh, the Japanese are just going wild here. So they're going to use that immediately. And here goes 2d6... It's a success. They now have the Lend-Lease marker, which is missing from their sheet. Oh, no, it's over here. They already got it on the board. Did they? Did we do that in an earlier turn and I forgot it? We must have. All right, then I guess. All right, yeah, no, I confirmed. I went back and checked. They grabbed the Lend-Lease marker real early. Uh, with a plan to get the alliance with Britain and France going, because Britain and France got a real early alliance, and the Americans wanted to get in on that. So this flag that we just spent here uh, instead would be used for that. Instead of getting Lend-Lease marker over, it would be attempt to get the alliance with Britain and France, and it was successful. So now the Americans make an alliance with Britain and France, which I believe only provokes... Japan, even though Britain and France are part of the alliance, I don't know if that would also provoke Germany and Italy. Nope, I found it. Uh, in the 6.1.1 provocation due to a successful alliance occurs based on all three powers in the alliance. So that means that enemies of Italy, of France and the United Kingdom also gain flags, maximum of one. Uh, and that means that Italy, Germany, and Japan, all the fascist powers gain a flag. 
So Germany gains a flag, Italy gets Il Duce, Il Duce and Japan gains a flag. So, uh, yeah, the Americans join the Democratic Alliance. They're still trapped under status quo because uh, we're waiting on... Oh, I'm sorry, no, they're not because mobilization from the Soviet Union ended it. Boom, gone. Sorry I missed that earlier. That actually also gave... Uh, every democratic power gains a flag when that happens. So we're going to put one in the cup for each of them because we forgot to do it earlier. Actually, let's put one uh, for France and Britain. Oh, you know what? Il Duce went in the wrong place. So let's say they were there and they just weren't able to use theirs earlier because reasons. All right. So that was the American flag getting the alliance. Uh, Germany's definitely going to interrupt with their flag now. They have no more left in the available markers. They're going to attempt diplomacy in Czechoslovakia. So let's spend that. 3d6 needs sixes because of the resistance value of Czechoslovakia. They got it! Excellent. So that's gone, and we gain a German cube in Czechoslovakia. That is, however, a provocation against France, Britain, and the United States. It is ramping the hell up here, people. The Americans are taking one. Uh, the French and the British get one. Would those go in the cup? At this point, basically, what the fa the Axis want to do is they want to provoke everybody as much as possible in this short period of time when they have no flags to like to, to gain. But uh, I don't think that's going to happen. We'll see. So that was the Germans. The Russians, again, are waiting for their uh, home front market to come out before they use that mobile, uh, the offensive there. And the British and American have the opportunity to use a flag. The British are going to use it immediately to try to increase their... Um, propaganda, their stability. They're going to lose this pressure flag. They don't need it anymore, but they do desperately need that stability. Here they go. That's a failure. Wah, wah. So they go to put a cube on propaganda. The British flag goes away and the Japanese may interrupt. Are they going to try one more time to get Guangdong? Declare another operation? Give America another flag? Why, of course they are. 2d6 for maneuvers. It's a success. Moving in with the two infantry armies to the Guangdong. This time I got a feeling that tonight's going to be a good night. All right, here it is. 3d6 for Japan. No. 1d6. 2d6 plus 1 for the Chinese. Oh no, it's five to three. They get thrown back. I mean, the good news for Japan is that they've never actually uh, suffered any losses, but they keep giving flags to the Americans. But you notice they are out of flags now. But the Americans will interrupt immediately because, again, Soviet Union is going to continue to pass. Americans are going to interrupt and they're going to spend their flag on something. I'm sure they're going to spend it on something. I think they're going to spend it pressuring the British to hopefully get them one of their flags. So here we go. 2d6 for pressure is a failure. The Americans fail. Okay. Well, uh, Il Duce could interrupt an increased commitment that gives people flags. They don't want to give flags. They're giving too many flags. I think he's going to interrupt and uh, nope, he's going to hold on to his. We're going to wait and see when the Italian uh, home front marker comes out. The French, however, absolutely will interrupt and try to increase their propaganda here. 1d6, 4 plus 3 is enough, so they're able to increase their stability. They're safe now. There we go. And that allows us to go to the cup again. There's a Soviet flag. What to do with a Soviet flag? Hmm... They could attempt diplomacy, but that would be at a minus one pretty much everywhere. This is their last time, probably, as political purges, giving them the ability to do political stuff. So do they want to attempt maneuvers here? I think they might want to attempt maneuvers. Yep, they're going to attempt maneuvers. 2d6. Failure. Well, it was fun while it lasted. Send to available. Next, out of the cup is an American flag. They're going to send that aid to Guangdong. Bad news for Japan. Yikes. Offensives really are necessary to get that plus one augmentation, but when the Americans keep sending aid to the Chinese, it gets real bloody real fast. They almost took over China. 
But she's noticed as soon as they start getting into this rough terrain, it gets real hard. That's why they wanted to get all this rough terrain, or at least the important ones, uh, while, uh, while, while it was with diplomacy instead. Okay, so they sent the aid to Guangdong. That is a uh, provocation against Japan. Japan gains a flag. They'll immediately spend it to attempt maneuvers again. No, probably not. They're going to wait and hope for the, uh, the other thing to show up. So they're going to pass. We're going to go to the cup. There's the British flag. They will again attempt propaganda with a plus one. Fours are better. It is a success. They lose their special cube, and they are now wavering. Whew. They needed that one. All right, next, uh, going to probably hang on to that Japanese flag. They just, they, they just need the offensive to come out of the cup, but it's a German flag instead. German flag used for the capturing of Hungary. The declaring of war on France. They don't even have an air force yet. I don't think they can do that. They don't need to send aid to Spain. I think this is one of those ones that they hold on to. Because they also want to increase mobilization this turn, probably. And they want to uh, hold on to their flags for increasing their stability if their home front comes out. All right. Another German flag. Crap. They're forced to use this one. They could use it to pressure Japan or Italy. Italy hasn't used Il Duce yet. They could use it to form an alliance with Japan. What did that do? It'll mean that whenever the Americans try to throw aid into Guangdong, the uh, the Germans get a flag. But I'm not sure if that's worth provoking them, but, jeez, we've already given them so many flags. The Germans would also get interests wherever Japan has interests. I think the Germans are going to attempt some diplomacy here in Finland. Yeah, let's try and get an extra victory point. Plus, I mean, you could attack from Finland. Just saying. Somewhere. Oh, it's a success. Germans gain a cube in Finland. Flag is gone. And they gain a victory point. Because status quo is over. They don't care about this situation right now. All right. Uh, and uh, that also increases the fascist victory points by one. And as a provocation against the Soviet Union... And the Soviet Union gains a flag to the cup. Next out of the cup, there's the Japanese offensive they're waiting for. They're going to augment it again. They're going to bring in their air force. 3d6 plus 1 versus 3d6. Real dangerous. I'm sorry, both. It's 3d6 plus 1 versus 3d6 plus 1. Here's Japan. Mmm, 6. Here's China. 4. Wow, it's about time. The Japanese finally win their battle here. By the way, two provocations against the Americans. One for the declaration of the operation. Two for the actual capture of the area. But the Americans don't have another flag to gain. So, the Japanese finally finish off the GMD. And get access to many glorious resources. So you can see now, they're not in an awful position here. Yeah, they're not in an awful position at that. Okay, so what are they going to do? Are they going to fall back to Jiansu? They're going to fall back to Jiansu with one unit, just to make sure there's... Uh, and I didn't put any cubes out for Jiangsu or for Guangdong. They want to make sure they don't lose anything. The British special base here, by the way, goes away. They lose it. Oh, oh the British should be getting flags every single time. Guangdong gets attacked because they have a base there. I keep forgetting Hong Kong gives them interests. So let's put two of them into the cup because the Japanese attacked a gajillion times and another one into the reserve for what just happened. And uh, yeah, there you go. Now we're, now we're pretty much caught up. I know I'm making like a dozen mistakes here. I'm not moving as slowly as I normally am because I'm trying to keep it interesting for you guys. If it moves too slow, it's just boring. All right, so... There we are. That was the Japanese successful capture of Guangdong. Provoked the Americans and the British. They both got their flags. Oh, you know what? The French also get provoked now that the alliance is in play and also because Indochina gives them interest in the area and they should have gotten a flag earlier, but it's okay. They're out of flags now. Uh, so those would have been in the cup. So uh, that 
all having been said, we move to whatever Germany wants to do. Well, they've had lots of success with diplomacy here, but um, I don't think they want to they want to go. So Japan is going to go. They're going to use their flag to attempt diplomacy against Java. 2d6. They need six. They got it. Wow. Japan is on a roll. It took them a while. That is, by the way, a provocation against the United States, France, and the UK individually and because they're all allied with each other. But they all have all their flags in the cup. This is what happens when the, when the fascists go crazy. Um, it lets them get away with some stuff and the there's just not enough time for the other powers to react in any meaningful way. Because if the Japanese do all these provocative things, uh, or, or the fascists in general, do all these provocative things very quickly, then you, there's only so many resources that can be launched that are represented by flags. Okay, so Java's captured. That's fantastic. Uh, oh, that wasn't in their interest, was it? No, it's across the sea area. So you know what that would have to be? That would have to be an invasion. Damn. It's across a sea area from an area they control that's not adjacent. They would need uh, a colony here in order to get that as, uh, as part of their interests. Crap. So what will they use this flag for instead? I guess we can pretend that they uh, grabbed uh, Gansu or Yunnan just for the victory point. They're both kind of meh, but either one of them allows them to get extra uh, interest over Sichuan. I think they're going to put one in Yunnan. That's what that role wound up actually being for, let's pretend. And that, again, provocation against powers that can't gain any flags. Okay. Next up, that was the Japanese flag. So the Soviets are still waiting for their home front to come out. They're not gonna they're not gonna jump in here. The British are going to interrupt to increase their stability. They're still in a position where they might collapse with a really bad roll. So they are gonna try to increase their stability. 2d6, fail. The Allies have been hitting a lot of fails on their 2d6 rolls recently. Japan, by the way, should be at what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Holy moly. End of the game now, the fascists say. Eight plus six. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, no, Germany has four. So eight plus three is 11, plus four is 15 for the fascists. 15 for the fascists, three for the communists, and uh, six for the democracies. Go teams! <laughs> but, you know, that's how the game always goes. In the early game, the fascists get the advantage because they set the pace. Uh, that was a while ago. Okay. Um, so the British went. Nobody else can interrupt. The, Brit the, the Germany and Italy could form an alliance here. I feel like they're feeling a little outnumbered. And the ability to move through each other's territory could mean that you could send, like, German armor down to Libya. Uh, because that's all nice open terrain, and the Italians have very limited forces, and they can't upgrade a lot. So, yeah, screw it. The Allies are all flagless except the United Kingdom. There's no reason not to do something that provokes them. This is the moment to do it. So the question is, do we use diplomacy against Denmark, or do we attempt an alliance? If we attempt an alliance, we have to follow it through until it's completed. And 2d6 is only a 55% chance. Germany's going to attempt to get a cube on Denmark. What does that do for us? Is it really good? Is, is, is Hungary a better choice? Yes, Hungary is a better choice. That will generate flags if the Soviets get uppity here. They're going to attempt diplomacy against Hungary. It is a success. Boom. 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 And Britain gains their flag back. Uh, and Germany spends theirs. And now, the Americans are going to attempt diplomacy against Java. They do have adjacency, and sometimes it's fun to do that because it forces Japan to... ...gives Americans an extra, you know, an extra, an extra uh, production ain't bad. 
when you've got a force pool full of stuff? Yeah. Why not? They've got two other flags in the cup. Two dice. Diplomacy needs sixes. They got it. They got it. Boom. And that's a uh, provocation against Japan. No, we determined that's not in Japan's interest. Wow. And America is on the board for the victory points. The democracies go up by one. 16 to 7 to 3 is the new score. And now the Italians continue to wait patiently, and the British can't go, so we go to the cup. It's a Japanese flag. That's going to go in reserve. We still got all the home fronts and quite a few crises to get through. There's the one the Italians were waiting for. They're at rearmament, and we are going to do 2d6. Here it is. That's a successful stability test at rearmament, so they may now move their units around. Dun, 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 dun. They don't want to move their units around. Uh, so that is the Italians done. That will allow Japan to interrupt if they want. But I think they don't want. Unless they want to finish off the communists. But they won't finish them off. It'll just chase them to Gansu. <sighs> Japan's got to hold on to that flag in case their stability test goes poorly. So, yeah, they're not going to interrupt. The British will interrupt because, again, they got no flags in there available. They want to use them before they lose them. They'll interrupt to increase their stability again. 2d6, success. The cube goes away. Their stability goes up. And their flag goes away. Now, the Allies feel like uh, they can increase their commitment safely because their stability's back in Good, good shape here. Um, but nobody else wants to go yet. Oh, the Italians' home front is passed. They are going to increase commitment to mobilization All right now. Yeah, baby! Double sixes. It happening. Italy's going to mobilization. They have increased. They get two things from the counter mix. Um, do we want to try with an air, a carrier unit? I don't. I don't think so. Uh, armor seems kind of redundant, but if they capture Provence, maybe that carrier does work out. Yeah, carrier upgrade. And an air unit. God, that's the last one. They're not going to be able to get any more ground-based units. This is a dangerous game. Yep, that's what they're going to do. They're, they're crazy now. They're crazy. That's all that there is to say. All right. Um, next, out of the cup. Yep, out of the cup. A British flag. They are going to attempt to increase commitment to D6. They're trying to get to mobilization now that the uh, status quo is gone. They are successful. By the way, I'm sorry, increase Italian commitment is a pro provocation against um, all of the allies. Bum, 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 bum. And the British flag that came out of the cup uh, would actually have been the flag in reserve. They would have interrupted and sent that flag. So that means they still have this one in the cup. Um, that is the proper sequence of events. So now the Italians and Germans are provoked by the British increasing their commitment to mobilization. So the Germans and Italians gain a flag. So maybe it is a good idea to get an alliance going here so that the Japanese can get some flags from provocation too. All right. Um, the British are going to have to choose some stuff. They're absolutely going to choose an air unit and I think an air force upgrade. Let's get the, uh, the British air situated here. They still can't take any naval units because the Washington Naval Treaty is still in effect. They get one more. So they took an air, an air upgrade, and they're going to take an infantry army. Or a fortress. Just a fortress in London makes it so much easier to send the BEF over. You know what I mean? I mean, you know what I mean, right? Yeah. A fortress in London is not the worst thing in the world. Let's do it. And the fortresses can be useful in other places if London isn't directly threatened. So there we go. So... The United Kingdom is at mobilization. They could declare war, but the Americans and the French can't join them because they're not at mobilization, so they would break the alliance. So that's not a good play for the Allies. Maybe 
just the Americans and the British. The French are just screwed right now. Um, okay. So that was the, uh, the British. The Germans were still waiting for their home front to come out. So the and the Japanese are also waiting for their home front to come out, and so are the damn Soviet Union. So a crisis is what comes out next. That's a five three. Chinese resistance could be real bad news. Let's do Sichuan first. Two d six. Ooh, they held it. Okay, Yunnan here south of that success. Guangxi success. Hebei up in the north. Wow, and Chahar. They got them all! And they automatically hold Guangdong and Jiangsu because those are, uh, those are garrisoned. Damn, son! That was very unlikely. I wonder if that just, that's the rising sun here. The game wants us to know. All right, so that was the crisis for Chinese resistance. The Soviets don't have to do one for their Cuba either because of the, uh, the thing. By the way, um, we skipped over, I think... The Chinese uh, Civil War is immediately over. We don't have to... Um, oops. We don't have to... Let's see. When armies from only one Chinese faction remain, the Chinese Civil War immediately ends. So the Chinese Civil War marker is removed and the influence marker goes there along with any aid. So here's what happens. This marker is removed from the game. I'll just drag it into here. And instead, uh, we take an influence marker, which is in the back of a Civil War marker. We put it over here, and we put the aid from the U.S. and the communists underneath it. So now that reminds us that um, any, uh, any diplomacy against Chinese armies now provide influence plus one for the uh, communists the Amer and the Americans there. So that is interesting. Oh, it just occurred to me. That's real sneaky. If the Japanese had sent aid to the Chinese communists while they wiped out the GMD, they would have also gotten a plus one in diplomacy. Now they have a minus one automatically with any Chinese army while they hold, to diplomacy I should say, while they hold any areas that don't contain a Chinese army, uh, so, yeah, the Chinese communists here are kind of pissed that Japan took over all of China. All right, but what did we just had? We had a crisis, and we fixed the Civil War situation there. Uh, yeah, so what now? Who's going to interrupt? The Germans, the Japanese, and the Soviet Union are still waiting for their home front markers, so the Americans might interrupt. And what might they do? What might they do. I think they're going to pressure France. No, France has no flags. What are they going to do? They can't increase their commitment. They already got their lend lease. They already got the other stuff. They got diplomacy in Java. They could try diplomacy in New Guinea. Let's do it. Six is only, but uh, oh, yeah, they're still at rearmament. So two dice is a fail. Okay, well, it's worth a shot. You got to get that flag out of there so it can be reused. All right. And next, nobody's going to interrupt, so we go to the cup. It's an American offensive. I think they're going to stick it in Spain to hell with the provocation. They don't want the Germans and the Italians getting control of Spain so easily. So uh, what that means is that Germany and Italy gain a flag. And then uh, we move on. And we go to the cup. The Soviet home front, that's what they've been waiting for now. They are going to change their posture to military reforms right after their uh, stability check here. Home front stability check at minus one. They go down by one. That was a three minus one, so a two. Their home front stability check uh, also lets them move down to military reforms from political purges. And they might consider moving their units around... Uh, no, actually, they're in a pretty good spot all the way around, all, all things considered. So they're going to keep it right where it is, and they're going to move on, and we're going to see what happens next. I think they're going to all pass again. The Soviets can't interrupt right now because they just went with their home front. I think Germany and Italy are going to attempt to make an alliance right now. They're going to interrupt for an alliance with two dice from Il Duce. Successful. Because they have those extra flags in the cup, they got to spend these. And now we have the German uh, Pact of Steel here with the Italians. 
And uh, that's okay because they're both going to be at mobilization soon. So that means that the alliance is going to hold throughout the war. So that's pretty good for them. Um, that is a provocation against uh, all the allies who are allied. And that means France gains a flag and the United States gains a flag. And they're going to spend those as fast as they can. But who wants to spend it first? Britain's going to spend theirs first. Nope, they went to mobilization already. Uh, America's going to spend theirs. And nope, they can't pressure France. France has no stupid flags. They're all in the cup. Ah, uh, let's see now. Um, America could attempt to send aid to Spain again, or they could diplomacy against Portugal. Go! Fail. Why? Because I can. And having an American base in Europe is important because if Britain collapses, then the allies, uh, the Americans don't have any real way to get over there. Okay, so sp flag spent Japan's holding onto their flag next out of the cup. An American flag! You don't say! What are they going to do with this thing? Siam, New Guinea, also possibilities. They're just looking for ways to catch up in victory points at this point. Yeah, let's do one of those down there. New Guinea, why not? 2d6, also fail. Waste of a flag. But they don't need it. Not this turn. They need it next turn, so they might hold on to the next one in reserve. Next out of the cup. An American flag. They're going to put it in reserve and hold on to it. Uh, and the British can't interrupt, so we go to the cup. It's a, ooh, it's a Japanese fortress. Whoa, don't pull everything out of the cup. Thank you very much. The Japanese fortress is going to get deployed in Tokyo, and then it can move all the way to Sichuan for deployment. That way, another Chinese resistance can't wipe us out there. Ideally, that would be an army doing that rather than a, uh, a fortress, because it's just garrisoning it. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do. All right. I forgot to interrupt with the Soviets who wanted to interrupt as soon as their home front came out. But that's fine. It's still nothing's changed. The allies have gone a couple of times. They're going to interrupt with their offensive. Send it to available. They're going to attack Romania with two infantry and an air force. And they're going to augment it with a plus one since they're at mobilization. This is going to give them 3 plus 1 versus 2 plus 1, since the adverse terrain is a thing. 3 plus 1 is a 7. 2 plus 1 is a 6. That is a success. The Romanian army is destroyed since it can't retreat. That is a double provocation against France and all her allies. And France can't get any more flags, but the Americans can. Both of them go in the cup. And the Soviet Union rejoices. They've gotten the Romanian resource. Oh, that's also a provocation against Germany and Italy, thanks to their alliance. That was actually a pretty good move there. You think the alliance between Germany, eh, it's not worth provoking anybody. But then later on, it pays dividends. You don't, you don't see it until it's there, but you get it. So there is an extra victory point for the Soviets. They're at four now. Is that correct? One, two, three, four. Yep. And I think the air unit is definitely going to regroup to, to Ukraine. And I think an infantry army is also going to regroup to, to uh, Ukraine. Unless we wanted to go after Yugoslavia, but I don't think we do. That's a little too deep. We don't have the ability to cover all those should uh, the Italians and the Germans start getting aggressive against us. Who knows when that's going to happen or if it's going to happen. But okay. How much stuff is left in the cup? Oh, yeah. There's a lot of stuff left in there. Plenty of time. The Germans aren't going to interrupt. The Italians will. They're going to attempt diplomacy against Yugoslavia again, especially now that the Allies... Oh, no, the British could go first because that was a Soviet move. The British are going to interrupt and do something. But what? But what? Diplomacy against Denmark just to piss off the Germans? That's the highest likelihood of success, but that gives them a flag, but they don't care. They don't care. They're crazy like that, you know? 2d6, Denmark is a friend of the British. Boom. Britain gains a VP. The democracies gain a VP, and the Germans start to worry. They got Benelux, but now the British... If they get another flag and do some maneuvers, they can send a damn unit there and have Denmark forever. Forever. So Germany, rightly, is going to interrupt and try to take that back with diplomacy. No, 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 no. That is very bad for the Germans. The Americans can't send anything into Denmark, so the flag, them, them using their flag is not useful. So we go to the cup. Fate is in the hands of the cup. 
It's an Italian submarine. They were hoping for something more innocuous like an American aid marker, but instead... I'm sorry, not a submarine, a fleet. They're an Italian fleet. All right, well, the fascists can't interrupt. So, the third crisis... We go to sudden death for the 1937-38 turn. It's not going to end anytime soon, though. No worries. The crisis is a 6-4. Scandinavian League, powers with the Cuban and ungarrison Denmark, Finland, Norway, or Sweden must perform an effectiveness check for each. The, the Scandinavian League. So, let's try for Britain first. They need a 5 or a 6 to keep it. They lose it! They just as soon as they get Denmark, it is thrown out, ladies and gentlemen. But the uh, Germans could lose their hold here as well. 3d6 for Sweden. Keeping it. Finland. Keeping it. Everything's coming up German. All right. So, that was a crisis marker. Anybody can interrupt. The Americans are going to attempt diplomacy somewhere because they got these flags they need to use. And Siam is not across the sea zone from their friendly area. Oh, but they have interest in Siam because they are allied with the British and the French. So they can absolutely do Siam. 2d6 for them. Wait a minute. Back up. Reverse it. The British are at effectiveness three. I'm sorry I missed that earlier when they increased their commitment. Uh, so they get one more die to roll to try to hold on to Denmark. It misses anyway. <laughs> Everything still comes up German. All right. So that brings us to uh, the time after the crisis. Um the Americans are... They lost this pressure cube a while ago, I believe. And um, the Americans are going to attempt diplomacy against New Guinea. They need sixes. They got it! Another victory point for the Americanos. And that means the democracies are catching up! 16 to 9 now! Man, it was looking good, but... Uh, Japan's doing great. Germany is just sitting there with no resources. What are they doing? Well, they're trying to get these resources. It's it's hurting. They need to get to mobilization. They just want to wait until their home front is done. Who wouldn't? Home fronts are great. Do they have an air unit in the cup? They don't. All their air units in the force pool. What were they thinking? What was I thinking? I was dumb. I don't think they have an air unit in the cup. They have a German army in the cup. I think we need to take that back. I thought that I had an air unit. Let's uh let's let's retcon that a little bit. The Germans cannot be that dumb. It ruins the whole game. Now they never pulled it, so it's still in the cup, so nothing really has changed except Germany is being a lot less dumb. They don't need another army here. They absolutely needed an air force. Uh you know what? No, I have to take that back. Because I'm pretty sure that army was a carryover from the previous turn. So I, I can't say that they were dumb. They chose the tank army, and they used it, I think. Nope, I can confirm they were just dumb. That's all. It was just that they were dumb. On the previous turn. Uh, so yeah, we'll fix that so that they weren't being super dumb. Again, I'm making mistakes in part because... Uh, I'm, I'm moving faster than I normally would be. I take my time a little more when I'm playing a face-to-face -face game. So in, we're just trying to make it feel more like a real game than uh, I'm playing solitaire. You know, I'm not cheating anybody but myself if I'm doing this. Um, so I just want to make sure it's a, it's a, it's an interesting game. So, okay. So we're back to who went last. I don't remember. Let's just go to the cup. I think it was the Americans trying to decide where to do diplomacy. Da, 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 da. American diplomacy was successful in New Guinea. I think that was uh, this flag that they spent. They should have done that. Um, okay. That does mean we go to the cup. Civil War resolution. Okay. So, this is the Spanish Civil War. Three dice for the right, a five. Two dice for the left, a five. A tie. All aid is discarded. And uh, Civil War continues to next turn. All right, and now we go down to China, and I think the Chinese uh, army that the last one standing can expand, and it can expand into 
anything it wants that isn't occupied by a powers unit. If the Chinese Civil War has ended, the winning faction may attempt to expand into one adjacent Chinese country not occupied by a land unit, even controlled by a power using an effectiveness of two. They're going to attempt to expand into Hebei to take over that uh, resource from the Japanese. So let's see if it's successful. Two dice. Fail. All right. Well, it's worth it. By the way, the Chinese communists at this point are controlled by the uh, Soviet player because it's a tie in uh, aid. Um, once you once the Civil War ends, all aid markers just become just condensed into one aid marker. All other aid is sent back. And the patron uh, that controls it when there's their tie is the Soviet Union to the communists. OK, so that's the end of that chapter. The Civil War is resolved. Um, we did both of them. So we go on. The fourth crisis can't possibly end the game. There's a gajillion American offensives still in there. So we got to put it back and pull again. We got to put it back and pull again. There we go. French home front can't be good. Ah, oh, they're in civilian. Actually, it's fine. Quite literally fine. Um, and they get to move their guys around. They're not going to do it. So we just pull again. A G German flag is going to go in reserve. Uh, next up, uh, who's that? Yeah, we're going to go. Okay, the Soviets are going to use this. Yeah, Germany was actually planning this turn to, on its home front, move units over to Silesia and try to grab Poland. But it looks like the Soviets are going to get there first. That's bad news for Germany. Uh, yeah, so the Soviets are currently going to declare an attack against Poland, use this tank army as the attacker, and this air, year, uh, air unit as defense, or uh, sorry, as support. And everybody gains flags except Japan. Germany gains a flag because they're the one getting, a, uh, they, they've got interest in the area. Italy gains a flag because they have uh, an alliance with Germany, but they can't because they already don't have one. The British and Americans gain a flag because the French have interest in the area. Oops, uh, let's put that one into reserve for the British, and reserve for the Americans. All right. Are they going to augment this? Well, what else could they do after this? I think they're just going to play it safe and use the augmentation. Three dice plus one against one die. The tank's superiority reduces the Polish die down to one. Three dice plus one, seven, one die, five. That is a success. The Polish army is defeated. The French are kicked the hell out. The Soviets get to come in. That removes the democracies and the French by one. Where's the French? There it is. And it increases the communists by one. They're catching up a little bit. And I think the Soviets are going to keep their tank army in Poland, and I think they're going to keep their air force in Poland, and they're going to regroup their infantry army into Poland. Now, I tell you what. This is all well and good. But if the Germans got frisky, they could deploy units up to Finland and attack Leningrad and then in, thence into Moscow. Dangerous game, right? Dangerous game. It would leave their back door open. They would count on a lot of collapses from the Soviets. I don't think they can count on it, to be honest. But they also know that the Soviets don't have any more aid markers. I think. One, or sorry, not aid markers, offensive. Two, three, four, five, six. No, there's two more out there. Ah, here it is. They just spent it. Seven, and the last one's down here in China being used as a marker. Okay. So that was a thing. The Soviets are now looking in a decent position here. The Germans just can't build anything. They just sitting at rearmament was a problem for them for the last couple of turns here. But uh, they are now going to allow pull from the cup, or are they going to let the British? The British will interrupt, definitely. And they're going to try to get Denmark back, because why not? The Germans can't gain a flag anymore. Missed it. Oh, well. Oh, they get a third. They miss it again. <laughs> All right. So the British flag is spent. We go to the cup. A French offensive... The French can't use it. They're at civilian commitment. What are they going to do? They're going to send... Oh, they're going to send aid to Spain. Yeah, might as well. 
That is a provocation against nobody. Yeah. The Italians probably should have thought about doing that with Il Duce before the French pulled a uh, thing. And the Il Duce will interrupt because the Italians have none to gain, so he better spend it. Um, and he's going to spend 2d6 on attempting diplomacy in Yugoslavia. Sixes only. Got it. All right. That's a provocation against France and the Soviet Union and the Americans and the British. The British are the only ones that can gain a flag. The Soviets can also gain a flag. I'm sorry. Um, and uh, Italy gains a point. France loses a point. Communism go or fascism goes up. Democracy goes down. All right. Uh, and actually, the French lose a lot more than that because they they don't have anything left. The Germans took it from them before. So the current is uh, British only have two because they lost Denmark. We didn't keep up with that. Uh, the um, so the British have two. The American have two, and that means the democracy total is four. <laughs> and then we have nine plus eight is seventeen for the fascists. We kept the fascists on track. Okay, that's good to know. Um, let's see. The Germans will interrupt because they don't have any flags left and they want provocations if they need them. Crap. What can they do with this flag? They've got more in the cup. Just do it. Commitment increasing to mobilization. No, they're not. <laughs> I said it with such decisive vigor, and they're not. All right. Well, it was worth a shot. Um, now the British can interrupt, and they absolutely will. They're going to try that diplomacy with Denmark again, and they've just given Germany another flag. And not Japan, unfortunately. That leaves Japan and Germany with the opportunity now to... Yeah. Germany is going to attempt to invite J Japan to the alliance. And the British flag was spent. All right, so Japan is spending its uh, flag. Actually, Japan is the only one that has to spend a flag on this, and they will, to join the tripartite pact. Here we go, 2d6. They got it. So we didn't mark it. Oh, we did mark it before. Here we go. Japan is now part of the fascist alliance. And that is a provocation against everybody. Uh, the Soviet Union gains a flag. It goes in the cup. The British gains a flag. It goes in reserve. Speaking of flags, the Japanese can't... Oops, the Japanese can't... Uh, can't interrupt. The fascists can't interrupt. So the British are going to interrupt. And they will try to get diplomacy somewhere else. They Oh, they lost the interest from the French over there. They're going to try to get diplomacy in Greece. It's a... Uh, you know what? Norway. Norway it is. 3d6. They got it. That is a provocation against the Germans, but too bad. They can't do anything. But Japan is allied with the Germans. Interests are shared. Japan is going to take their flag into reserve. Um, Norway increases the British uh, uh, flags by one, which increases the democracies by one. Germany's going to interrupt and spend its flag before bad things happen. <sighs> now, Hubei... Requires a seven because, wait a minute, no, it doesn't. The Germans have interest in China because they have interests everywhere the Japanese have interests. The rule is that Japan gets a minus one against the Chinese army in Hubei because Japan controls piece of China. But what if it's an ally of Japan? A power attempting diplomacy against a Chinese army occupied by a Chinese army must uh, apply a minus one penalty if they already have control of a Chinese country without a Chinese army. Germany is going to attempt diplomacy against Hubei with this flag. They need sixes. They got it. This is a weird game. This is a super weird game. Diplomacy has been incredibly effective in this game. Now... Does that provoke? No. I don't think so. Okay, I just confirmed. I found a, a board game geek uh, 
forum post where they updated the support document to include this situation. And what it says is that the uh, offensive markers underneath the influence here, once the Chinese Civil War ends, no longer count as aid and therefore no longer give interests in areas that they used to. Um, so what that means is, uh, yeah, the the Germans got the, the point. The fascists gain one. The Germans gain one. And uh, that doesn't provoke anybody. Bada bing, bada boom. They just got some points there. And uh, effectively, they've neutralized that threat should the, ex- the, the, the power try to expand now. The Germans control it because cubes trump the markers here, which is interesting. All right. So. So that was a German flag. Uh, they kind of probably should have used it for Denmark, but, uh, you know, um, and they also lost their cube and increased commitment. The German players just going nuts right now. They, they just, I need to use this flag and they forgot what they were doing with it. All right. Uh, the British are going to use a cube and they're going to use it for diplomacy in Ireland. Why not? Because it fails. That's why. Okay. Um, and now the Japanese are still in the waiting game. They're still waiting for this stupid home front to come out they're expecting and trying to expect to use it on the stability track i think the soviet union is also going to pull out theirs uh they have a cuban maneuvers i don't know if they want to use it on maneuvers i'm pretty sure at this point they want to get their stability back up because as long as they're at wavering a sneak attack by the germans uh even if they're weak the japanese could join in and take over a bunch of territories and it could be real bad news for them uh if they collapse or surrender so they're obviously wanting to avoid that game ending scenario so the the soviets are going to interrupt and they're going to attempt to increase stability uh, which gives them an extra die, but it's at a minus one thanks to the military reforms. This propaganda has failed. All right. The Americans will interrupt this program uh, and they'll attempt diplomacy in Portugal. 2d6. Failure. The Italians... Got Yugoslavia last time. What else is there to get? Like, everything has been successful here. Do they just hold on to Il Duce for next turn? I think maybe that's what they try to do. Maybe they just go for victory points. Bulgaria is right there, but that would provoke the Soviet Union. There's only so much you can do. Switzerland is useless. Do they, they can't declare war until Germany gets to mobilization or they break the alliance with them. <laughs> Italy can do diplomacy in China? Uh, yeah. Italy. Il Duce. Diplomacy in China. Nope. Oh, well. You tried. You tried. It was, it was, you tried your best and you failed miserably. The lesson is never try. The Soviets are going to try again, though. And this time they're at fives and sixes on three dice and they fail again. Next out of the cup is a French flag. France is here, everybody. Don't forget, they're in the game, and they're going to attempt to increase their commitment with a one die. And it's a success! So, they needed that. Okay, so French increased commitment. They get to add three things to their counter mix. They're going to add... Uh, it's too late for a fortress, obviously. They're going to add a f- uh, an air force, because uh, they desperately need one. They don't have any. And then maybe another air force and an infantry? No, air force infantry and an armor upgrade an armor upgrade this is looking like an aggressive france you know what i'm saying i'm saying that's looking like an aggressive france all right so that's done they spent their flag that's a provocation against everybody in the whole freaking world uh japan gets a flag italy gets il duce back all right and to that end germany is going to interrupt and use this flag to try to get Denmark back. Three dice. Successful. The British gain a flag for provocation. The Americans gain a flag for provocation. The French gain a flag for provocation. What in the hell is going on here? This is diplomacy wars. Um, And then we got to adjust this down, and this up, and this up, and this down. I have no idea. Actually, this should be here because of Norway, and that means that I need to add that all up again at the end. Who knows? Um, Yeah. 
All, I guess, usually war is declared before this point. The weakest damn power in the whole game is Germany, because they can't get their stupid home front to come out. Uh, but they might, you know, ignore that. Britain is going to try to take Denmark back again, because they've got three dice. Why not? Why not? They just do it. Germany gets their flag back, and, uh, and, and the British are like, yeah, no, we like this whole Denmark thing. We'd prefer to hold on to it. Thank you very much. Um, and that would be... Four and two is six, bing a boom, and Germany's down, and the fascists are down. Wow. This is a ping ponging, a ping ponging all over the place. Japan gets an extra flag, goes in the cup. Once everything goes in the cup, then this can slow down a little bit, I guess. Germany is going to interrupt because they cannot let the British get a flag that puts something in Denmark. They can't let it happen. So, send to available. 3D6, Denmark. Oh no, the first time. Oh no. The first one to miss is Germany, not Britain. That's going to be hard for them. Britain is cheering. So, uh, uh, that goes to the cup next, I believe, because that, no, this is German. The uh, Americans could interrupt and do something here. Can't do any more diplomacy over here. Everything's diplomacied out for the Americans there. So let's try Portugal, 2d6. There's a success. The Americans can do it in Portugal here because uh, the French and the British both have uh, interest in Portugal, and therefore it extends the American interest in Portugal by alliance. Now, that is not a provocation against any of the other powers because they're not adjacent to it via one sea zone. So that just gives the American an extra victory point, and therefore the democracy is an extra victory point. On to the cup, question mark? Hmm. He'll do say. He'll do say. What would you say? He'll do say. Do you have a plan? A plan for what to do with your flag? I think you do. I think you all do. We're going to attempt to send aid to Spain. Maneuvers. Success. A provocation against all the damn allies. Germany's screaming, No, don't give the French a f the British a flag! You fool! How could you do this to us? And the Italians say, Franco needs help. We give help. That's how it works. So, the British interrupt and attempt maneuvers. It's successful. <gasps> they have to abandon London to do it. <coughs> oh, boy. They're gonna, though. They're gonna hold on to Denmark. Yeah. That's a dangerous thing for Germany. And tank army directly next to them doesn't have to invade by sea. Whew. This is deployment, so we can also move the air force over there. Give it cover. <sighs> yeah. Man, Europe is looking weird. Pacific is great, but Europe's looking weird. Okay. The Japanese can interrupt. And they will, just so that they have a flag to burn later. Um, they're going to attempt diplomacy against Gansu. 2d6. Successful. Look at this. The conquest of China, ladies and gentlemen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine VP for Japan. Okay. I'm not sure, but I think we're going from the cup next. German flag. Going into reserve. They still want to increase their commitment, but they'd still rather wait until after their stupid... Stuff comes out of the cup. Here we go. Next. Uh, to the Americans and the French. The French already increased their commitment. Everybody's increased their commitment except Japan who can't and Germany who could. And it gives them some offensives. But they'd love to have that stupid plane. In order to do so. Next out of the cup. There's the German home front. All right. They've been waiting for that for a long time. Rearmament means plus zero. 3d6 is successful. They don't lose any stability. 
Now they can redeploy. They're going to redeploy the infantry over to Silesia to make sure... No, maybe Czechoslovakia. Yeah, Czechoslovakia, because I was kind of worried. As the Soviet player, I was looking at this and going, hmm, I can take Czechoslovakia without declaring war and grab that uh, industrial resource. So now, Germany can't interrupt, uh, but the Americans can and will. They will attempt to perform maneuvers and send aid to Spain. 2d6 is a failure, so the Americans get a maneuver cube and the send to available here. And the French, uh, geez, the French don't know what to do with this flag. They can't increase their commitment. The maneuvers doesn't help them unless they want to send more aid to Spain, but for them it's not that valuable. Let's keep it in reserve. The French are going to be happy if they have flags to boost their uh, stability with. Next out of the cup, Japanese flag. They've only got one more in the cup. And put that in reserve. All right. Next out of the cup, the British home front. They are at mobilization. Sixes are the only ones that will let them pass. They got it. They keep their stability. And the British can now move things around for free. They did that before. All right. Next out of the cup. Oh, you know what? No, I'm sorry. That was a British home front. The, ja the Germans are definitely interrupting and going to mobilization. Here we go. Send to available. Uh, and 3d6. Oh, they missed their mobilization roll. Bad news. They've got one more in there, but it's it's not looking good for them. Next out of the cup. A German flag! They can do it again! They got it that time. A 4 upgraded to a 5. And uh, that will allow them to... Get some commitment offensives, and geez, I was thinking they needed to hold on to all of these things for use later when they're at war. But I think they gotta spend the Czechoslovakian resource. Right now, it gives them an extra offensive. Next turn, it would give them an extra offensive and two builds. But I think right now, they can't afford to wait. I think they need three offensives. So they're going to spend the Czechoslovakian resource as part of their commitment offensive. Um, and that will gain them three. One, two, three. Because they trace the other two to Ruhr and the Berlin. They're going to hold on to the Ruhr resource, the Benelux resource, and the Swedish resource, obviously. Because they can't tra 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 trace to that now. Um, now that is a provocation against these other ones, but let's finish Germany's thing here. They get four new units. Oops, uh, kind of mix. Germany gets four new units. Which will they choose? Well, they're definitely going to choose an infantry army. And I think the fortress is still going to be useful if they get one of those. They're going to get one more sub because one sub is useless, but two can do something. Three could be even better. <sighs> They've got a total of three air units. Do they need a fourth to fight this battle? Or do they need another infantry army? One, two, three, four, five, plus a fortress. And another fortress. It's a tough call. I'm thinking another sub would be useful, but... Hmm. Real tough call. Who am I more worried about? Soviet Union or the West? The British have mobilized. France has not. I think we need another army. We're not even going to build that many armies. Can't, we can't build that many armies. Damn. This is a really hard choice. What am I going to miss if I don't have it later? An air upgrade? An air upgrade. All right. So, then we got to do the commitment. Everybody, or the, uh, the provocation. Everybody's provoked. Everybody's provoked. Except France, who can't gain a flag. That was Germany's turn. 
Britain can go now. Do they declare war? They lose their alliance. That's the only thing. Like, they're in a great position to declare war on Germany, but they have to break their alliance with France and the United States. But man, does it seem worth it to just collapse Germany right out of the game. I think they do it. Germany's finally hit mobilization. So they're a threat now. They got to try. They got to try. Maneuvers for the British, or sorry, declare war action for the British. Success. The British leave the Demo Democratic Alliance and they are now at war with Jesus Christ, everybody. Everybody. The British are standing alone. But they might. This might be a horrible idea. I'm sorry, the Americans aren't involved. The Japanese are involved. But what we just did is give the Japanese permission to go and invade Malaya, didn't we? Oh, well. The Washington Naval Treaty is no longer applying here. Oh, Germany needs to be added to that. Boom. And when the Washington Naval Treaty goes this way, nothing else gets provoked. Uh, I'm sorry, Germany is definitely going to get provoked. But that just means they gain a flag. And now the immediate operation that the British uh, perform here is to attack the Ruhr. There are no German air forces to help. So this is a three versus one minus one. Very high chance of success. Three dice, five. One minus one is a three. That is a success. And I don't know what happens to this temporary resource. I think it acts just like any other temporary resource, and it's captured by the British. So that's a flag for the Brits, and they just spent that one to get um, the attack, so now they get it back. And uh, yep, that cuts off the German armor. They can't trace through Denmark. Oh, wow. This is actually quite the cutting blow against the Germans. Um, and the Soviets should probably be looking at this with fear. Because this is looking like an allied victory right here. If this uh, if this goes the way it looks like it's going to keep going. I guess we'll find out. Um, but Italy is part of this war, by the way. Um, they also get provoked, I believe. Yes, that's one of the uh, provocation things. Declares war on it or its allies. So Italy and Japan both gained a flag from that. Good to know. And... Uh, yeah, uh, the German um, fleet can rebase to Benelux. So there's that, at least. They didn't lose it. Um, but this gives... Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. This gives the Germans an interesting opportunity. To invade London. To counter. Because if they attack to try to take the Ruhr back, they're going to have a problem. I think we need to deploy and conduct one build as the Germans. I think that's the best play. Because Germany still has the highest effectiveness, so they get to interrupt first right after that British attack. Yep, Germany's going to spend the offensive they have in reserve. And... Shit. I think we forgot the British uh, commitment offensives when we in increased them to mobilization earlier. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so they should have one that's still sitting in the cup somewhere. We can pretend that it was never drawn. Um, they would have only gained the one, by the way, when they went to commitment, because London is uh, the only one they could train, trade, uh, trace to. 
Oh, I'm sorry. We skipped the German uh, stability test for lo losing uh, one of their home areas. They passed it. So no stability loss for Germany. So yeah, Germany's spending its offensive. And the first thing they're going to do is they get one action. Well, they get two actions. They're going to spend one to build an air force. And it'll go in reserve. Because now that they're belligerent, they can spend their military actions on builds. And they are going to... Uh, spend the second one on deployment, which is going to allow the Czechoslovakian unit to move out here and the fleet to move out into the North Sea. And that's it. The British can now do something. Uh, and I think they're going to. Why did I do that? The Japanese can't have that too there. Um, the British are going to use their flag to try and take Berlin before, it, before the G Germans do anything. So here's the flag. Send to available. Maneuvers. They got it. They got it. The Americans have maneuvers. Did they fail a while ago? I think they, I think they lost that cube and I forgot about it. Um, okay. So, they're declaring an attack against Berlin. And they're aiding with their air. So this is three dice versus one die. Here it is. Three dice for the British. Five. And... Four. That is a capture of Berlin. They can retreat to Bavaria or Czechoslovakia, but they've already used that resource. They don't have to. Um, yeah, they're going to retreat to Bavaria. Two British cubes go down. Two British flags are gained, but they only have the one. And then the Germans suffer two stability tests. One Two. They pass them both. The German people are strong, but the British people are smart, and so they retreat to the Ruhr. They know, they know that uh, if they stay in Berlin, they're going to get attacked from behind and lose access to their supplies. They don't want to do that. Although, actually, whoa, whoa, did they just get cut off? No. They can draw supply through Norway, Denmark, and into here. That would have been great if the fleet had cut them off from their supplies and they would have been in limited supply. Because they can't trace through France anymore. France ain't no ally. Um, they couldn't go to war. They're stuck at rearmament, so they can't join the war, an offensive war. All right. The Brits successfully captured Berlin. The Germans are going to put down an air unit as their action. And I guess the Brits are going to attack Silesia since that's not defended by air units. Um, and this time, Silesia... <laughs> Silesia cannot trace supply to anywhere. Although you never have to trace supply for non-units, so I guess it doesn't matter there. They're already weak enough because they roll one die. So, the Brits attack Silesia. This is a declaration against... This is an, um, a provocation against the Soviet Union. Um, oh, hang on. They have to conduct their maneuvers check first. Here we go. 3d6. <gasps> they missed it this time. Take the flag back. Soviet Union doesn't get it. The Brits missed their maneuvers check. All right, so they wasted their flag. The maneuvers is over. The Italians are going to use El Duce, I think, to try and get some units up there. You know what? The Italians missed their... Uh, commitment offensive as well. That should be in the cup. Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> no, you know what's happening next? No, Germany has to be defended. Il Duce is going to attempt maneuvers. 2d6. Damn it. It was the wrong move, apparently. All right. Do the Americans interrupt here? They could pressure the British, give them one of their flags. If they pressure the British, the British can keep on this rampage. Yeah, Americans are going to try to pressure the British. It's a success. The Americans' flag is traded for a British flag, but the Brits can't interrupt. The Japanese can, but if they do then the Brits will be able to do their next attack. Let's instead, the Japanese would like to interrupt, but instead, 
Since they can't directly help Germany, they're going to help Germany by letting the next pull from the cup happen. It's a British flag anyway. All right, 3d6 uh, plus one for maneuvers. Totally successful. Now the British attack Silesia. Declaring an attack on Silesia gives the Soviets a flag, which goes in the cup. And now they actually decide to attack Silesia. It's again 3d6 versus 1d minus 1. Oh no! Are these dice pre-programmed to roll triple ones at the critical moment? Holy moly! This could be absolutely... Okay. If... If... They roll three or better in Silesia... The Brits are destroyed, and it's a disaster. They got it! Oh, no! Fate turns on a dime. The Brits suffer a four-to-one disaster, and they lose their entire land army. They have nothing left on the map, and the air has to rebase somewhere nearby, so it goes back to the Ruhr. And that is a triumph for Germany. They get a flag and a disaster for the Brits who have to suffer a stability test. And they pass it. The drama. The Germans need to take back Berlin. They're going to spend a flag on maneuvers to try to do that. Successful. So, unfortunately, this army can't trace supplies because they don't have a production site anymore. Both of theirs have been captured. So, this is three dice minus one versus one die. That's a four. And that's a one. Okay, they get Berlin back. Wasn't great odds since, because of the, thanks to that minus one. Um, the air unit's going to stay in Berlin where it can help out any of these areas. Uh, and... Um, the Germans gained two flags because they gained back one of their home areas, which happened to be a capital. That's why it gives the second flag. The British don't lose anything except the points, and I'll redo all the points later. We're changing hands so much here. Um, so that was a successful maneuvers action by the Germans, which means the British are going to desperately spend this flag on maneuvers trying to build something. They're successful. They get one build. They're going to use it on an army. They're going to rebuild that army. It goes in reserve. But, <laughs> man, if the Germans just wait, if they wait, and the thing that comes out of the cup is that German offensive, they could invade London, albeit at a minus one with no air support, so it's a non-starter. The Germans are going to interrupt to attempt to get maneuvers to get the Ruhr back. They don't want the game to end, the turn to end, without them having control of the Ruhr. That's part of it. Three dice. They got their maneuver check. They're going to declare an attack. They're, they're not minus one anymore if they come from this direction. If they come from this direction, then they're still minus one, but the enemy's minus one as well. Crap, does that hurt them more than it hurts me? Yes, it does. So they are attacking from this direction with the tanks, supported by the air, and they are in limited supply. So this is three dice minus one because of the limited supply versus one die minus one because of the armor superiority. So three dice minus one is a two. One die minus one is a one. Success. Oh, hang on. We need to do the air battle first. That might change things. Let's do Germany and British. That is a disaster in the air. It doesn't count as a disaster, but it is uh, altogether bad. They can't retreat. That is a 6-3. to Because um, air units that are supporting don't have to check supply. Boom. So that didn't change the outcome of the battle. I had the air superiority I expected there. Um, which I shouldn't have expected, actually. That was a tie. That was an even match going in there. All right. But the British cube is gone there. Germany takes back the Ruhr. That's a flag for Germany, which they just spent, so they get it right back. Um, that's kind of the defensive bounce-back factor, is when you spend a flag uh, to get something back, it gives you a flag right back that you can use, um, which is nice. Okay. Now, they return to Benelux with the um, 
with the uh, with the regrouping phase, and the army in Berlin stays in Berlin. We don't want any sneaky actions going on over here, if you know what I'm saying. All right, now, we still got some offensives in that cup, thanks to our prodigious use of the uh, limited resource in Czechoslovakia. So, while we'd really like to have that Polish resource, we can't. Sometimes you can't have what, uh, everything you want. Okay. What do the Germans do next? They can't. The British can reinforce London. Too bad. The Japanese now have no reason not to increase to total war. Now that they are belligerent against the British, 2d6 is a success. The Japanese are now at total war, and that gives them one commitment offensive, unfortunately only one. They're going to put in reserve. All right, and they get to increase their force pool by three. Last chance to increase the force pool here. They're going to gain an army upgrade. They've already got a logistics base. They've already got a naval upgrade, aircraft upgrade. So they're going to take the army upgrade. They're going to take the air unit. And how many army units do they have? Everything's on the board. One, two, three army units. What are we going to need to defend? Well, we technically have the fortresses here, too. So that is... Um, so I don't have to worry about defending Manchuria or Tokyo. That's where I'm going to put the fortresses. But I've only got two army units to take the Philippines and hold them, and Java, and all of that. So the last one is going to be an army unit. As loath as I am to do such a thing as that. Okay. So that was the Japanese commitment increase... That provokes the Americans and the French by extension, but the French don't have any flags because they haven't been able to spend theirs. Uh, and the Soviet Union is also provoked, but they don't have any flags either because all the action has been going up here at the top of the record display. Now the Soviets can interrupt with a flag. Do they? Right now, we got to calculate victory points because I don't think the Soviets want to collapse the Germans. I think that'd be bad for the Soviets. I think they just want to keep watching and taking stuff. Because they're far behind in the victory point battle, I believe. Let's look. The British are up 1, 2, 3, 4. That's correct. The Americans are up 1, 2, 3. That's correct. The French are at 0. Oh, that's correct also. So the democracies are at 7. The communists are at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's... Yeah, that's it. The... Germans are at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. They lost one from somewhere. Oh, no, they still have the Chinese one. There we go. And the Japanese still have the 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yep, that's correct. So 9 plus 6 is 15, plus 4 is 20. That's where fascism sits. It sits at plus 20. And while, you know, the Soviet Union says, I don't want the Germans to collapse... Looking at that number, maybe they do. Maybe they do. Huh. They are in a position to do something about it, although the French aren't involved. Germany could just as easily wheel around and start beating on Poland because they don't have to worry about the French. The French are at rearmament. They can't fight this turn. And the British just got their asses handed to them. And the German fleet is still blockading the North Sea. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to do the smart move. No, I had to keep that army in Berlin because the Soviets might have gone around any direction. They could have gone through Czechoslovakia into Berlin and they could have gone through Silesia. Either one. The Germans just don't have enough things on the board. Damn you, Germany. You're making this hard. But the Soviets, I think they're smelling blood. I think they want both of those resources in Germany proper. But before they do that, maybe they need to work on their stability. They've already had their home front, yes, but when the war starts, you don't get a lot of flags, especially not when you're on military reforms. Let's play a little cautiously, because I've seen a game where the Soviet Union took over all of Germany, 
but then collapsed. And it's real hard to do anything once you've collapsed. So, it's much better to be at total war for the end. The Soviets are going to attempt propaganda. You know they have two cubes in there. I, it just doesn't need to be a hard thing. This is a plus two to their propaganda roll, and that's a success because they had minus one before. All right, so send to available. Propaganda's done, and they're stable. Now, if they get a flag, they might consider using it for declaration of war. Okay. Germany's going to interrupt, and they're going to build. They're going to attempt to build. 3d6. Success. They get a build. They're going to put a fortress on the turn track for next turn. Get that out there. The Americans are still not at war. They can't do anything. They can't increase their commitment any more than it already is. They can't get any further. They can only do nothing. They can send aid to Spain. That's it. Um, that gives Italy a damn flag. Let's hold on to the American flag right where it is. Next out of the cup... An American offensive, which they're going to place in Spain. That's one of the things I expected. There's no reason to waste that flag on something where you're going to get it for free already because you spent it. All right, that isn't... Uh, Italy gets provoked there because they're not at war. So that's kind of bad news for the British. And Japan gets provoked by proxy because they're all allies. And because... Yeah, the Japanese didn't want to use this. That's right. Um, that's why the... Uh, that's why everybody passed. They were all passing. The Japanese is waiting to use this offensive until after they get a flag that they can use to redeploy their troops to the optimal position for an offensive. Know what I mean? Yeah. Wait a minute! Nope. They can't do that. Damn it. <laughs> can't do that for a number of reasons. They weren't ready. The Washington Naval Treaty broke and they weren't ready. The Americans are interrupting. In order to attempt maneuvers. They didn't get it. Okay. That's the only shining light here. See, the Japanese cannot uh, currently get to the Philippines with a sneak attack. You can't use a sneak attack to perform a naval invasion, nor do they have an invasion set up because they don't have any fleets here. What they really need to do is declare war on the Americans with their carriers in Hokkaido and then use that to hit the Hawaiian Islands as strongly as possible with the minus one surprise. Wait a minute, how can they get surprise? Oh, because it's not a naval invasion. I'm sorry. Uh, declare war not with a flag, but with that. So what they need is a flag to allow them to redistribute all their stuff. Is it their only offensive? Yeah, so not only do they need a flag, they also need... <laughs> Jesus. They also need a logistics base in Hokkaido. Something tells me this is not going to work out in their favor, but they can try anyway. <laughs> all right. So the Americans spent their flag trying to get that. Um, the next, uh, the Italians are going to send some troops up to defend the Germans. Yeah, maneuvers. Go Italy. Got it. All right. Uh, Germany is going to have some friends because they're both belligerent against the British. Um, and what else do we do with this deployment? The British don't have any units in Egypt, so Italy doesn't have to worry about Libya, per se. So I think the other Italian unit just goes to Cilicia to help shore up these defenses, and then we put the Italian air in Czechoslovakia. Germany feels a lot safer now, and the Soviet Union's kicking themselves for not declaring war earlier, but they can afford to wait. It was a risky move earlier. It could have paid off, but it was a risky move. They can still do a lot in the coming turns. All right. Meanwhile, Japan is still waiting for some flags. But instead, a Soviet fortress comes out of the cup. Oh, Il Duce's done, by the way. Um, Soviet fortress comes out of the cup. Where does it go? Whence does it go? To Romania, freeing up that army? 
to the far east, freeing up that army. What are they most worried about? They can't put it in Mongolia without moving the other guy first. I think they put it in... I mean, Leningrad's really a good place for a fortress. It just stops the attacks towards Moscow really easily. Yep, Leningrad's a good spot. Okay, next. Do the French want to do anything? There's nobody... You know what? The French could try diplomacy against Ireland with their flag. That way they can at least get provocations from people again. Let's do it. One die. Fail. Was worth a shot. They don't have any way to get... I mean, they could also try against Greece and other areas as well, but um, that would open up some stuff here. Okay, next out of the cup, an Italian flag. They can build with it. Absolutely. One die for maneuvers. Fails, but we're going to put a cube there. And that's done. Next out of the cup, an American flag. Can't build. Don't need to send aid. Ireland is in there. No, it's not. It needs to be. Oh, but France is still their ally, so Ireland is still in their interest. 2d6 for Ireland. No, 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 wait a minute. America is attempting maneuvers. I always get confused here. And they succeed this time, dooming the Japanese. Um, so what they're going to do is reinforce the Philippines with everything they possibly can. And that's what the Japanese wanted to avoid, but sometimes you can't win for losing. Uh, the Americans can also send some units to Portugal? I'm not sure that's worthwhile. They can send units to Indochina. That's a decent place to put them. That can threaten all the Japanese cubes in China. And, oh no, they're not at war, so they can't do belligerent stuff. Never mind. Keep that in California. The fleets, however, can be put into bases. Whose base can they be put into? There's no other American bases except Samoa. Let's keep it in uh, the California, then. Keep it in the California for now. We can't put any more into the Philippines because, you know, it is what it is. We could move this logistics base and try to get it into the Philippines this turn and then get another American flag. Yeah, let's do it. They put so they during the deployment they put the Philippines thing into the cup and they redeploy these guys. Oh, that's dangerous. That's a dangerous game. No, we need to keep uh let's let's keep Hawaii defended now that I think about it. Let's not lose Hawaii. Losing Hawaii means everything else in the Pacific is out of supply, and then the Japanese just roll up on you and take all your stuff. You don't want that. You don't want that at all. So they've redeployed to the Philippines, that's defended. They're defending the Hawaiian Islands. The Japanese are currently not in a position to attack American Samoa, so they've still got their supply line through here, should they need it. And now we move on to the cup. There's the Japanese flag they were waiting for, and they needed a maneuver check. Here we go. 2d6. Damn, Japan missed it. They still have another one in the cup, another two in the cup, and we're going to the pole. Japanese home front. Uh-oh. This could be bad for them. They're at total war. It's a minus two. <sighs> They're okay. It's only one level down. Once you get to total war, you're just hoping you only lose one level from that. All right, next out of the cup, an Italian offensive. Well, I didn't set myself up to do much except attack the British fleet in the central Mediterranean, but I don't have any support. Neither are they. So, two to two. Here's the Italians with an augmented plus one. Oh, that's a seven. The British defenders, a three. It's a triumph! Malta is captured! Uh, which means i got to pull out the counter marker thing here. Sorry about that. It's going to distort everything for a second. The Italians have taken Malta in a marine operation. It They just absolutely caught the British uh, fleet 
napping, um, completely off guard, and uh, yeah, that's a triumph, which means the Italians get a flag, and then it's a disaster for the British, 3d6, they pass the stability test, the resultant stability test. Now, I'd like to regroup this fleet at the Terranian Sea uh, so they can block the Mediterranean um, against uh, the British shipping, but I can't do that right now. He's stuck in the Central Med, which is not the worst place to be. And uh, we'll get back to that later because Il Duce just came out, so we'll use him soon. A British infantry... Huh. That gives them resiliency in London. They gotta have that. But in Egypt, they can attack Libya. Nope. Let's defend London first and foremost. Alright. Next out of the cup, a German flag. They can't perform an invasion with a German flag. So they're gonna convert it to... A maneuvers. Because they don't need it for propaganda. They're not declaring war. They can't increase commitment. They've already got the alliance. They don't need to pressure. So yes, maneuvers for builds. Successful. What do they build? They got a lot of options. Let's build a sub. It goes in reserve. That goes off to here. And we go to the cup. It's an Italian air unit. Well, why didn't you say so? We'll go to Lombardy and then deploy to the central Mediterranean. Let's protect that fleet and the new base we just conquered there. Because from here, they can support combat in the Terranian Sea because they're in a base. And so if we put this fleet out of the Terranian Sea, that fleet blocks the Mediterranean and the other fleets can support and defend it. It can't support and defend them, but they're in a nice base, so they're good. All right. So... That was the Italian air, so none of the fascists can interrupt. A Soviet flag. This might be one of those times where the Soviets, now seeing the writing on that particular wall, are going to just take that flag and put it in reserve. Yeah, well, we'll go, we got plans for it later. Next up, a German flag. Oh, hang on. The Italians wanted to interrupt and perform maneuvers. They've got a Cuban maneuvers because... After they move that? I just have to assume I, I, I did that correctly. Ooh, it still sucks, though. Ilduce did not make it. Uh, now the Soviets still decline to interrupt with this particular situation. Oh, but now they have to do something with this cube. Everything they do with it is minus one. Can't build. Not a lot of good places to attack with. They're going to try maneuvers. Two dice, sixes only. At least they get a cube in the box. The Germans can interrupt and build their subs. Next out of the cup. That could be the end. Let's see how many are left. Germany has got three things, and they're only at mobilization, which continues the turn. Yep. So we put the crisis marker back, and Japan desperately hopes to see one of their flags pop out. Nope. It's a German flag. They could pressure Japan. They know how much Japan needs it, but Germany also needs builds. Look at how many things are in their force pool that they can't build yet. And they're going to want those offensives next turn. Yep, they're going to try maneuvers. Success. They're going to use it to build another uh, subfleet. You know what? Oh, no. They can't really starve the British without, uh, without breast, can they? Or... No, Norway doesn't even let them get... They have to get the Western approaches or else the British are not going to starve. If the Germans take Norway, from there they can attack the base in Iceland and then they can do it. But, Jesus, the sub is a bad choice, actually. The first one wasn't necessarily because they can just cause the British a pain. 
Maybe. No, you know what? I forgot about needing Brest here. Let's just retcon this a little bit. That makes no sense for the Germans to get subs at this point because France is not in the war. They can build them next turn if they want. What do they need this turn? Was like an army that they would have built earlier. And then another army going in the cup or an air unit. An army. Not in the cup, in reserve. Okay, so that's what they did with their flag. They built and put it in reserve. Next, a British flag. I think they're probably going to use that to build too. They have quite a bit that they can build with it. They don't need it for stability. Then again, they might need it for stability next turn. Yeah. Once you're at war, it's hard to come by flags. They're going to keep a hold of this one because it's the last one they've got. The American offensive isn't needed in Spain. Let's put it in reserve. Don't want to provoke them anymore. There's nothing they can do in China with it. They already did their mobilization to get uh, protection down in uh, the Philippines. So we go to the cup. Uh, we go to Germany, actually, who will interrupt and put an infantry unit in the Ruhr to make sure that never happens again. Also, now they can maybe fight in Denmark. Uh, next out of the cup, a German air unit. We can add a German air unit to Benelux, and now it's now we're off to the races here. Next. Oh, this could be the crisis that ends it. Let's see. German, German, German. Nope, still three things. There's the Japanese flag they've been waiting for. Maneuvers 2d6 plus 1 is a miss again! Japan, what is going on? What's going on? All right, send to available. Next up, and you know I've been talking, I've been thinking of actually, you know, Japan should try to attack the, the Americans this turn. They shouldn't actually, because then the Americans get war offensives next turn. They should delay that. I mean, once the Americans got to the Philippines, there's no reason to get the Americans this turn really. Uh, offensive that's not needed in Spain they're going to take that into reserve as well hope that maybe next year, next year they can go to war and they'll have this offensive carry over next out of the cup a German offensive do we do it folks? do we do it? hang on let's do something smart I think I gave up an obvious move for the British. When their flag came out, they should have used it and interrupted to attempt maneuvers. 3d6. It's successful. They sortie out to attempt to take out this... There's no reason to leave that fleet there. They absolutely would have done that. And the uh, Germans had one air unit at the time. Bada-bing. Um, and... Let's see. That would be two dice to two dice, because this is no augmentation with a, a British flag. Uh-oh. So that's six for the Brits, and six for the Germans. It's a tie. Both air units are gone. Destroyed. And now we have carrier superiority, and then nothing for the Germans, which is two dice to one dice. Here's the Brits. A six again. Here's the Germans. A five. They must retreat. And then the British choose to leave one fleet out here and put the other in Scotland. The reason you do that is because the Scottish fleet can sortie to support and that way you'll have carrier superiority wherever you need it and if the Germans do something sneaky like if the Italian fleet comes out and puts themselves in the western approaches or something, I don't know, something crazy could happen. Spain could go Italian and then they got a base over there. Um, if that happens, then this fleet can sortie out and attack something in the Western Approaches. This fleet can't attack something. It can't be part of an operation. It can't even support because it's not in a base. It's on patrol. So that seems like the good, correct thing to do. Now the Germans um, have their offensive come out of the cup uh, and will we'll play that out. Obviously, the invasion is no longer a possibility. So what do they do with this offensive? Well, they need resources desperately. If they can't get this invasion going, what's the point? So let's spend this offensive uh, as a build, 
and put a fleet on the next turn's turn track. That way we'll have two fleets next time, and we can do a little more with that against the Brits. The French are going to take a while to actually get in uh, to the war, hopefully. So here we go. Next out of the... Or do the Japanese want to interrupt? Or the Americans? No, they don't. So next out of the cup is an American offensive. They're not at war. This is basically useless. They're just going to throw it to available. They don't want to give any more flags to Italy. They're already getting the upper hand in Spain. So they throw it away. Next out of the cup. Japanese flag. They now get a plus two. 3d6. So 2d6 plus two is a success, finally, for the Japanese for their maneuvers check. And what they're going to use that for is a deployment. They're going to put their carrier and their long-range strategic bombers in Hokkaido. Then they're going to deploy some fleets out. One fleet in the East China Sea. Another fleet in the Marshall Islands. That could take American Samoa if they do that. Um, the fleet in the Marshall Islands does not have any air cover. That seems super dangerous, actually. I don't want to take the chance of anything happening to that fleet, so we're going to bring it back, actually, and keep it in Tokyo. We're going to do the same thing here. This fleet can respond to any fights happening anywhere around here, and this fleet's going to be in the East China Sea to give us uh, the ability to do whatever we need to do there. Meanwhile, we're going to redistribute this fortress to Tokyo because I got sneak attacked through... Just all it takes is two offensives from the Americans. Boom, boom. And you lose... Your ability to produce anything, your ability to get offensives, just complete. Tokyo is a disaster if they if the Japanese lose it. They, they, they might be able to get it back if they already had a ton of stuff in the cup. If they don't, they're absolutely screwed. So we can't allow that sneak attack through the Philippines. Um, and that means we can now uh, look at anything else to move. Well, let's move this guy. But where? Down to Guangdong? Leave the other one in Jiangsu. Man, it's hard to decide where to put these guys. Wait, Guangdong is not restricted. So I can put the two guys into Guangdong. Let's put this guy in Guangxi. You know, just because. No, that's not a good reason to do it. <laughs> um, let's keep him in Jiangsu. Or Manchuria. Like, only one thing can invade the Philippines because it's res 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 um, restricted terrain. So there's no reason to have these two guys piled up here, but they would allow both of them to invade Indochina if we needed to in the future. I'm just trying to think of all possibilities here, but I think we're good. Okay, so that was the Japanese flag. Does anybody interrupt? Soviets want to keep that flag. Do the Japanese want to attack now? I don't think so. They would rather the Americans not get war offensives they would get four war offensives. And that's that's just awful. You know what I mean? It's just awful. All right. Um, oh, the Japanese could use that offensive to take Hainan. It's a provocation against the Americans and the, and the French. But then we have a base in the South China Sea, which could enable, enable... Oh, hang on. The Americans absolutely garrison Java. No question. Right? Let's pretend that that was smart, a smart move we did when we were actually thinking. Um, do we attack Hainan with this offensive, or do we carry it over? I think they're going to be starving for offensives when they're actually at war with the Americans, so we do not use it. The French flag. They, do they want the flag in reserve to bring themselves to mobilization next turn? Or do they want the offensive in reserve so they have something to do with it? God, that's a hard choice. They're going to get the flag no matter what, right? Oh. oh, boy. They can't build with it. Pressure the British. Let them build with it. Here we go. 1d6 for pressure. Oh, well. Next out of the cup. Nobody wants to interrupt. A British offensive. They needed that. Um, I think the only move they might want to do would be to attack the Ruhr with this. But even though they'd have carrier superiority, the Germans would have air superiority, and then it would tie. So instead, I think they want to build with it. 
because they need some air power. So we'll spend the first one absolutely on builds. We're going to build an air unit. And the second one could be on a fortress that they could put down in London on the following turn. Of course, they couldn't do it if they have it stacked up with units. They could build a second air unit, which wouldn't be out of line. They could also build a damn tank. Prevent... Yeah, you know what? I think that's the move. You got two... You got this offensive, gives you two builds. They're going to build a tank upgrade as with those two builds. Okay, that's the end of that. Next out of the cup, German offensive. Ah, oh, but what do they do with this? They got that fleet for next turn. I think they use it for an air upgrade. <gasps> they use it for an air upgrade. Then they can strategically bomb London with it. I mean, this is their last offensive of the turn, and that's too bad. But if they have a flag left in there, they can use it to offensively bomb London. So yes, they're going to use theirs for an air upgrade. Two builds for an air upgrade. And then the British are going to come back and build their armor up in London. Then the, the Germans are going to come back and use their air upgrade in Benelux. Next is the German flag they were looking for, 3D6. They got it. They declare an air strategic bombing on London. This is the first time I've ever seen this actually happen. So a strategic bombing on London is an air combat. Um, and, you know, technically the, Egypt, the British had an option to do a deployment to bring their air back earlier, but instead they built the tank. And technically it's better to have to cancel tank superiority than it is to get the chance at air superiority. Because losing a die is much worse than gaining a die. Um, or your opponent gaining a die. So this is a strategic bombing operation. So it's an air battle. Um, and there's no such thing as air superiority in an air battle. There's not like carrier or... So this is just going to be two dice against the one die of the inherent defenders of Britain. The anti-aircraft guns and everything else. And for a strategic... Uh, bombing, active air units, including at least one strategic air force to attack an area within range containing a resource. And if we commit any losses that the defender can't absorb, meaning any losses at all, if we win the combat, we, we just damage their resource. So here we go. Uh, 2d6 for the German air unit is a 4. 1d6 for the Brits. 3. That is it. The resource in London is damaged. The British will not collect it. How do you like them apples? Then the uh, force there returns. Now, the Italians desperately want the ability to blockade the Mediterranean before the turn ends and stop the British from collecting these resources, but I don't think that's going to happen. Because I think the game's going to, the turn's going to end here real soon. The Americans get a flag which they will use in a way that don't matter. Let's get Siam. It's adjacent to France. That makes it in America's interest. 2d6. Got it. One extra American point that has to be get taken away at some point. Right? Right. Okay. That's the American flag. Next out of the cup is the crisis. And it's the last thing, ladies and gentlemen. That's the end of the turn. The Italians feel really bad about not blockading. Wait a minute. When did they... They constructed this unit and flew it down to the central Mediterranean? No, no, no. They can rebase it. But, oh, air units that aren't strategic bombers don't block lines of communication. That's why that didn't make sense. So when they captured the central Mediterranean, they couldn't rebase to the Mediterranean Sea because that's not a legal base location. That's too bad. There really was no way for them to do it without another flag. They had to spend it going up here to block against the stupid Soviets. That's too bad for, uh, for the Italians. But they did damage the British a little bit. So hopefully I'll remember about that. I probably will do the next piece of this tomorrow. And I'll try to edit some of it tonight and put it up. It'll be great. So, uh, thanks, guys, for watching. 
Uh, we're going to set this up for the next turn, which means the fleet and the two German fortresses are now coming out, and the American offensive goes to the holding box, the German, the Soviet flag, the Japanese offensive, and the French offensive. We're now set up for 1939, and the Britain versus all the fascist war has only just begun.